Hello everybody, my name is Matt with Scope Education. Here we're gonna be talking about the proper asthma treatment so we can get them from this inflamed, disgusting, asthmatic look right here to these poorly photoshopped, better, cooler looking lungs, all right? So what is asthma? We're not gonna hit on this all that much because if you're in emergency medicine, you should probably have a good idea what it is. Even if you aren't in emergency medicine, you should pretty much know what asthma is. It's a very common respiratory issue. Basically, it, asthma uh, causes the airways to narrow and swell, and then they start producing this extra mucus. There's over 4,000 deaths per year, so it's really kind of important to know how to treat these patients. So for our treatment for asthma, right, we got four things we got to keep in mind. We got our oxygen, obviously very important with any kind of respiratory patient. We got to administer our beta agonists, such as your albuterol. It gives some atrovent. And you give some kind of corticosteroids, such as solumedrol. The reason why we give your atrovent is because back here, you, they produce some extra mucus. And the atrovent's really good at kind of drying these patients out. So here's our scenario. You got a 40-year-old male with a chief complaint of uh, shortness of breath. And here are his vitals. Here's the heart rate, 160 beats per minute. Sinus tack on a 12 lead, because that's the only diagnostic way to do it. Blood pressure's looking pretty good at 105 over 72. Room air saturation is 60%, and you're awesome, and you put them on oxygen with a non rebreather bass with a dual neb going, so you got your at atrovent and albuterol going, that bumped him up to 73%. His respirations are 30, and you're noting wheezing upon auscultation of all lobes of the lungs. And, and title is 55, and you got the shark fin morphology, as you see right here. So a dual neb isn't working, what do you guys want to try? You guys are gonna just straight down the PVC challenge and intubate them, do nasal cannula, or do you wanna do some CPAP or BiPAP? Well, obviously we're not gonna do nasal cannula because, you know, why would we regress back to a more inferior device such as you know, nasal cannula if a non-rebreather isn't even working? Well, the next step up is CPAP or BiPAP, so let's try them on that. So when you become hypoxic, you're not gonna be thinking very clearly, you're gonna be oxygen starving, you're gonna, they're gonna fight you, they're gonna be slightly combative. If you've never had a really bad asthmatic, then you haven't had enough asthmatic people. So we need to find a way to calm these people down to properly attach your CPAP or BiPAP, right? I'm gonna give some Versed, some fentanyl, you wanna give some ketamine. We're gonna be giving your ketamine. The reason why is midazolam, or Versed, and fentanyl decrease your respiratory drive. And in our asthmatic or any respiratory patients, we don't want that. So ketamine is our best bet. And you can use ketamine for anything. Got a combative psych patient who's kicking you in the face? Ketamine. Patient with extensive burns? Ketamine. Anxious hypoxic patient on the brink of cardiac arrest? Throw in your ketamine. The reason why we wanna use ketamine is because ketamine actually is a bronchodilator. It causes bronchodilation by increasing the catecholamine levels, which then bind to the beta receptors and cause smooth muscle uh, relaxation and your bronchodilation. And as I said before, it doesn't cause the respiratory depression like the other sedatives I just mentioned. Awesome, so you just put your patient on CPAP, you sedate them slightly, and you gave them your ketamine. Got an IV and all that stuff, the oxygen saturations are in the low 80s, so a lot better, but you know, not ideal what we're looking for. What medication do you guys want to give now? You decide on giving your mag. This medication can be used for multiple reasons, such as your torsades, your eclampsia, pediatric acute nephritis, hypomag, and your severe asthmatics because it also acts as a bronchodilator. Now, the specific mode of action for this throughout all my uh, research and stuff like that isn't completely well known. One of the theories is that magnesium sulfate inhibits the cells from uptaking calcium across the smooth muscles, which leads to these muscles relaxing. And the second one is that magnesium sulfate decreases the release of histamines from mast cells, the power of degranulation. But as I said before, we don't, they're not completely sure why. There's going to be more research going into it, but just know that it's a bronchodilator, so that's pretty good. As you can see, the normal dose is going to be 1.2 grams, 2 grams over about 20 minutes. You don't want to slam these patients with it. So after you give your mag, congratulations, they're at 92%. So what now? You administered your oxygen. You gave your albuterol and your atrovent in your dual neb. And what's left? Oh no, we did not give our steroids. So... So make sure that you guys give your uh, slime or your corticosteroid, whatever one you want. If you're pre-hospital, 
give it even with short ETAs to your hospital. And you may wonder like, you know, why would I give this if it's not gonna immediately help our patients right in front of me, especially with a short ETA to the hospital? Well, we're trying to help these patients as much as we can. They're already stressed out. They don't want to be, you know, admitted or intubated or all this stuff. So if you give it, like, you know, 20, 30 minutes away from the hospital, you just did them a great favor. You know, you probably prevented them from going to the ICU, like I said before, intubated, and all this other kind of stuff. It might take a while, but just be a good advocate for your patient and just give them some steroids. And here's the outcome. Your patient wasn't intubated. Would you look at that? That's crazy. It's not like I totally designed the slideshow to come up with that outcome and is released a few hours later. You are awesome. So here at Scope Education, we always push for education. We, you know, you should always follow your own protocols, guidelines, whatever you have in place. We only try to push out medicine, evidence-based medicine, but no kind of bias towards it or anything like that. And though I really do love my academy. As I said, follow your protocols and stuff like that, because at the end of the day, I really don't want 700 messages of you telling this to your supervisor or, you know, the physician or something like that, and then me getting a nasty email. So, you know, think about my feelings. Don't do that to Matthew. And if you guys want more videos on stuff like this or whatever, uh, check out our website, scopeeducation.training. We don't just make YouTube videos. We do have our own website. We do post weekly or even twice a week. Just depends on how school is going for me and, you know, how motivated I'm feeling. But like I said, check us out and I hope you guys have a great day.